here folks, it's Kikoskia here, and welcome back to Let's Play Betrayal at Krondor. And when last we left off, we've done some investigations, and now we're heading north of Caval Keep in the direction of Kenting Rush. It's quite likely that there's going to be a lot of peril between here and there, so let's make sure that we're as ready as we can be by going to this store that had quite a lot of Nighthawks by it. I highly hope this isn't a trap. Ooh, there's definitely something here that might be a trap that I'm still going to click. James approached the wooden stump cautiously. Seeing that it was hollow, he looked inside. And we found some money! Not bad. What about in here? A bell rang. Hooray! It's not a trap! This is Etc. Goods. The lay of the goods store was comfortably familiar, arranged in such a common sense fashion that it took only a few moments for James to locate the items which interested him. A key, a key, a key, an armorer's hammer, a herbal pack, some rope, a shovel, torches, and whetstones. This is a pretty good store. This is a brilliant store, in fact. And our inventory is pretty full of notes here. Not sure we're going to need all of these. I might dump some of these notes off in a little bit, but uh, for now, we're going to continue to head north and find this house right here. Let's have a chat. After knocking loudly on the front door several times, James was just turning to leave when a crackling voice slipped under the door. Hello, good friend. We would like an opportunity to speak with you. May we come in? What? What do you want? I said we would like to talk with you for a moment, and perhaps get some fresh water for our pouches. Huh? You want fish water for your cows? No, I said we'd like some fresh water for our pouches, and we'd like to talk to you. What? Could we come in and speak to you? What do they want, dear? They say they want to come in and sleep with us. They want to see our ducks? We don't have any ducks. Why would... Ah, oh, never mind. Never mind! Sorry to have bothered you folks. Well, that was a uh, effort in futility. The corn was too young. Discarding the ear he had picked, James shrugged his shoulders. Eating this would just make us sick. Let's move on. I wasn't expecting you to try and eat it there, but hey, there you go. Right. Are we approaching another very large open area? Oh, we're approaching another very large open area, aren't we? Well, we are going to uh, head this way and see what we can find. And I think I see, yep, a trio of chests that, of course, are Mordhell lockboxes. What goes with a wagon that doesn't benefit the wagon, but the wagon cannot move without. Quite a lot of these you have to sort of think outside the box and uh, not think about physical things, but the I uh, things around it. Like Nesty! No, no, not Nesty. Mm, ah! But that O though! Noise! See? It's not actually a thing, but it's there whenever the wagon moves. And in here? Ooh! 53 money. A shell. A clerical oil cloth and some gems. And your inventory is practically full, which is a shame. But we can now go check out this one. Passed from father to son and shared between brothers, its importance is unquestioned, though it is used more by others. Oh, well, I know this one. This one is a name. And he even gave us one of the letters to begin with. More money. Not going to say no to more money. I've got this as well. And this too. And we still have one more chest to look in. And this one is a big one. Never resting, never still, moving silently, hill to hill. It does not walk, run or trot. All is cool where it is not. Huh. S-U. Hmm. If this is an E... Aha! Sunshine. 
That one wasn't too tricky, though I have been stumped by other ones in the past. That one being so long... That wasn't too bad. Oh look! More things we can sell! I'm not kidding, there are so many things here that we can sell. And I think I know where I'm going to go and sell them. I'm going to go quite a ways back. In fact, I think I'm going to go all the way to Malik's Cross. But Kiko, I hear you say, Maddox Cross is ages away. How are you going to get there in decent time? Well, I have a plan. And that plan is that I'm going to head to a temple. Now, there's a temple just south of Cavill Keep. And we're going to try that teleportation thing that we've been uh, shown quite a bit. Now, I think... The, um, way here is the waterfall. Is this the waterfall? Let's have a look. Yes, this is the waterfall. We don't want to go to the waterfall. We want to head a bit further south to get to the, uh, and there's the, uh, clonk because we got to the edge of the road. There we go. This one right here. We're going to go this way. And encounter the people that are like, No, you cannot be here because metal. By the will of Banneth. Now, I've done a bit of research into what places I might want to go to to do what I'm doing. And I'm going to head to Maddox Cross. Can't go there directly, though. We can, however, use this to get to the Temple of Lim's Kragma. It costs 112 sovereigns. But it's worth it. Felt tip travel! James recalled the mandala. Like a wheel of fire, it exploded across James's consciousness, vanquishing the world in a searing blaze of white light. For a heartbeat, all that existed in universe was a single point of rotating fire, spun by an unseen hand with incredible power, spun by the hand of a god. James blinked. As abruptly as it had burst into existence, the mandala was gone, replaced by a simple painting upon a temple wall. A new temple wall. Nearby, a clutch of darkly robed acolytes waited, their faces registering neither shock nor fear at the sudden arrival. You knew we were coming? James asked, stepping away from the symbol. As a courtesy, we are given some warning by the sending temple, one of the priests said. You will likely feel a bit disorientated for a time, but the sensation should pass. Be welcome. And here we are! We're in the Temple of Lim's Kragma, which brings me all the way to here. Now we can head north, and we can head over to Nia Shop. This is not the primary reason why I came here, though we will be making a fair bit of money by doing so. So, going up here, and over here, should get me... Oh, hello you! Despite best efforts, we couldn't make it budge. Alas, alas. Do that. We need to get a couple more rations eventually, too. Right, keep going this way. Follow the road for a bit. And here we are, at Nia's shop. Thank you very much. We haven't been here a while. Right, we are going to sell this here. Don't need it. Going to make a fortune selling it. Don't need it. Um, don't need these arrows. I'll sell them too. Don't need this ring of Pranda. Don't need this ruby. Oh, oh, that's a lot of money. Don't need this shell, because we already have one here. Don't need these clerical oilcloths we'll get a good 79 sovereigns for. And I don't need... What else don't I need? Can I sell you these? I can sell you these for 166 sovereigns! Absolutely! Uh, what else don't I require? Don't need this. 35 sovereigns. And we don't need that. Marvelous! We have made a lot of money just there. In fact, we are on 8,000... Sovereigns. It's fair to say we're pretty wealthy right now. So, we will then exit. And we're going to go to Malik's Cross. 
Actually, we could go to the tavern first. No, no, there's, there's, there's a tavern in Malik's Cross. We can go there. And we will go there. Right, just zoom over here. Meow! Now, we could go all the way to Crondor as well doing this, but uh, we're not going to. We don't need to. So, we are now... where exactly? Ah, we've gone right past where I need to be. Whoops! That's what I get for following the road too much. We need to head south at some point. And the south we need to go to is this way. There we go. Spending a couple of days traveling around. It's not really going to hurt. Now, where are we getting closer to Malik's Cross? There we go. Just zooming along. Got to rest again. Apparently, as well, the game gets a bit weird if you spend too long traveling about and you end up uh, having absurdly high hit points. That's not something we're going to need to worry about, but uh, it could happen if you decided to farm health. Now, that is not the way towards Malik's Cross. But it is somewhere off the road. Here's the way towards Malik's Cross. If we go this way... And... Down here... This should get us there. Oh yes, this will get us there. Right, we're going to save before I do this as well, because uh, hopefully... It's going to be something I can afford, but it also might not be something I can afford. So how's our equipment doing repair-wise? Not bad, but uh, we could uh, afford to fix this up a bit. Oh, not as bad as you thought. There we go. You got that to 100, and that's at 99 that Gorat's wearing. Malik's Cross, let's go. Temple. I never actually clicked this one. I could have actually just gone straight to the Chapel of Isha, but that's okay. Let's enter, and let's look to bless something. James searched his pack. Which of her items would you like blessed today? The priest asked. Let's, uh, let's click the sword. It seems like only, uh, armor and weapons can be blessed. How about this? The priest accepted the item. So carefully, he laid the great sword on a low table covered with a white cloth while he opened a book which he retrieved from a cluttered bookshelf. Flipping through its tattered pages, he found a column of numbers and ran his finger down them. I've always wondered why the price of a blessing varied from item to item, James said, watching the priest. Does it have something to do with the gods? Rather more to do with how the item was made, the priest explained. If there are any special metals used in its construction, or spells used to bend the metal, then they become factors in how difficult it will be to make for us to make a blessing stick. Leaning closer to the page, he stabbed at a figure. Ah, here it is. For your great sword, it will be 310 sovereigns, the priest said. Sure. James waited. Far off he could hear the low chanting of the priests in the alcoves, their prayers weaving the fabric of the enchantment. It seemed the better part of the day had passed as he listened to the sonorous uh, sonorous whispers rising and falling in the near dark. Suddenly, the doors to the great chamber were thrown open and the priest emerged, the blade laid in his arms, swaddled in a white cloth. Your weapon has been enchanted, the priest said with a bow. Use it as your place among the great wheel bids you. Upon the great wheel bids you. This is now blessed with 15% accuracy. Oh, oh, that's a good blessing. I'm going to have you bless this too. 310? Sure. Could you bless this? 322 sovereigns and five royals? Sure. What does this do to the armor? I don't know, maybe 15% damage resistance? Either way, we'll bless this too, and we'll bless this as well. We have so much money, we might as well get them all blessed. There we are. 
just like that, we have 15% more accuracy with James's attack. So now he will be hitting with 72% accuracy, and you'll be hitting with 90% accuracy. Definitely worth the excursion. And we're done. Actually, we're not done. There's two more things we can do. First off, we need supplies. I need to clean up some pots in the back, but I might have a minute or two to chat. What can I do for you? We want some food. Any chance we can get something to eat around here? Wouldn't be much of a pub if you couldn't. Is it to eat here, or are you looking for something for the road? The road. If your cook can make up a batch of rations, that would be fine. It's a done deal if you put up seven gold a pack. Still want them? Uh... Sure? I don't see any reason I wouldn't. It's a reasonable price. Good then. I'll set a blaze under Daphne. She'll have them for you in a few moments. Here we go. Seven gold for fourteen. It's pretty good. Also, we're gonna haggle. Six and three. That seems much better. Marvelous. Oh, now we'll use the teleporter to teleport back to the Temple of Banath for 110. Felt tip pen travel! And just like that, we're back here. And not only that, we have lost a fair bit of money, but we're still doing very well when it comes to uh, coin. Just over 6,000, and some highly enchanted gear as well. Don't mind me, people. We're leaving. And we need rest, not surprisingly. Ah, they don't like those people, do they, nearby? Ooh, have we uh, gained some stats? We might have. Or we just might not have eaten while we were uh, resting around. Somebody, by the way, mentioned idly that... Um, I haven't used the spider on my weapons, and I was confused about this at first, but uh, then I looked at the description of the spider. On its underbelly, a long shallow groove bisected its length and passed between its fangs, a groove through which a sword blade or an arrow point could easily be passed. What if I did this? Flipping the ornate miniature over, Gorath slid his sword blade through the groove which had been incised into the spider's belly. But there was no fluid visible in the small channel, his blade now dripped with a green venom. Oh, and you can have two things there, but I'm pretty sure that's poison. I'm pretty sure that we've just poisoned our blades. And that's fantastic. Also, need to do that, uh... Kept. Oh, we've kept an emerald. I was, I was going to sell this emerald, but uh, I totally forgot to sell that emerald, didn't I? Where is Cavil Keep? Cavil Keep is actually ahead of us, so we could sell the emerald at Cavil Keep. We won't get as much money as what we had, we would have got with uh, Nia, but uh, you know, it's not terrible. We still made a lot of money by going to talk to Nia. One. Small loss of profit is not going to hurt me when we've made tons and tons of money as it is with all the stuff we do. Right, this is to Cavil Keep. We'll sell the gem. We'll sell that's 76, that's 30. We'll sell the 76 one. 153? Still pretty good. Still pretty good. And we will also buy a couple more rations, because, surprisingly, we still need more of them. Um, let's talk to you. Ooh, people we can talk about. Let's do this. Been right across the street from the Count. Being right across the street from the Count, you must see him quite a bit. Actually, no. The Count is quiet. Likes to keep his own company, mostly. He's not one much for drinking with the commoners. His whole family has been much the same way with the exception of his daughter. Does he have any unusual callers at his house? There aren't many that would visit him. Don't get me wrong, he isn't a bad sort, but he can be unpleasant at times. Well, the only people in and out of there are the are Eugene's suitors and the men who work for the Count. Let's talk about Navan. 
I hear that the Count isn't too thrilled with one of Eugene's suitors, a fellow by the name of Navon de Sandow. Know anything about him? It's a pity he doesn't like the man. He's perfectly charming, handsome, mannered if you haven't crossed him, but zealous if he thinks you've done something wrong to someone. He'd be just the cat's whiskers for Eugene. Any idea where we could find him? He's a businessman, so it may be difficult to track him down. I think he lives in Kenting Rush. You might try asking in the taverns there. And Neville Corvallis. Did Eugene ever tell you how it was that Neville died? I was only seven midsummers when it happened. It was a terrible, terrible day. I thought Eugene would come apart then, but she has quite a bit of a mother in her, a lot of iron. They dug up for four days, poor men. Never were able to recover the little tot's body from all the rubble. I still can't imagine what the Count must have been thinking. Uncle? What did he do? I mean, why did he hire that man Sandow to build the wine cellar for them in the first place? He had a bit of a reputation as a drunk as it was, and three times while he was building it, the Count discovered him so capped he couldn't even stand up straight to take his thrashing. The Count should have known Marcella would be unstable. I'm sorry, I'm not being fair. Of course, none of us had a way of knowing. He wouldn't... They wouldn't have purposely had the cellar built shoddy. Why waste his money? Hmm. Let's get some rations. Sure. If you would, please. Would it take very long? Only a few moments. Oh, they're expensive. They're not cheap rations here. But, you know, we'll get a pack of seven. And we'll haggle for them. Oh, wow! Two sovereigns and one royal for seven? Yes! That's amazing! That is amazing! Also, pass that to you. And pass this to you. That is the power of haggling, folks. That is the power of haggling. And we just need to head north again. Back to uh, this area. And it's getting dark. As it always does. Did we just gain a stat there? We did! We gained some health and some more stamina. Marvelous! So we'll just head a little bit north and... There we are, back here. And when we come back, folks, we have cleared out some more inventory, checked a tiny bit of this area, and checked out both teleporting and weapon enchantment. And my... We're both worth it. We're both worth it. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks. For this wilderness awaits, and I'm sure there'll be some enemies there who will surely regret us coming face to face with them. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.